Good afternoon and welcome to the Kennedy Space Center and our Hidden Figures panel discussion. Thank you all so much for uh, being here with us. In the 1960s, NASA was on an ambitious journey to the moon. And the human computers portrayed in Hidden Figures helped get us there. Hidden Figures is a 20th Century Fox movie based on actual events. While the film dramatizes some aspects, it is true to the struggles of the women at the center of the story, Katherine Johnson, Dorothy Vaughn, and Mary Jackson. The victories for racial and gender rights were not achieved easily or quickly, and our work is not done. Today, NASA strives to make sure their legacy of inclusion and excellence lives on. We must also take a moment to remember the passing of an American hero, John Glenn. Whether you knew John personally or not, you were touched by his grace and character. He is even a part of the fabric of this film. Jim Parsons said, quote, in many ways, Glenn is the reason we have this movie. Now, we are pleased to be joined by members of the Hidden Figures cast and its producer and director. Please welcome to my left, Ted Melfi. Ted is the writer and director of Hidden Figures. Octavia Spencer plays Dorothy Vaughn in Hidden Figures. Taraji P. Henson plays Katherine Johnson, Hidden Figures. Janelle Monet plays Mary Jackson. Pharrell Williams, producer, Hidden Figures. And Bill Barry, NASA historian. Bill, thank you all so much for being here today. How was the tour so far? Great, huh? Very, very amazing. <laughs> amazing. I have a, a question first for you. Mm. Yes. I know you were quoted as, uh, as saying that you dedicated this film to everyone in the world who sat through unconscious bias. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about the process. The process of making, of making of, of why you feel that way. Uh, well, I mean, it's, it's a story, you know, I mean, the movie is about unconscious bias in my mind, right? The movie's about colored bathrooms and colored coffee pots and, and uh, not getting promotions, not being paid what you're worth, not becoming a supervisor when you're qualified to become a supervisor. That's what the movie, not, not being able to go to a school to get a degree like Mary Jackson's character or like Mary Jackson's character having the same degree as a man but that degree is good for a man to be an engineer, but not good enough for a female to be an engineer. Um, not putting your name on a report. Katherine Johnson wrote many reports that her name's, name is not on. Uh, these are the, that's, that's what unconscious bias is for me, and that's what the movie is about. All those things that are not um, overt per se, but they're, they're very, you know, they permeate every aspect of, of civil rights and NASA and, and the struggles this country had back then and the struggles we see today. So. Ladies, I wanted to ask you, and I know Taraji, when at the Toronto Film Festival, I read something that said you actually teared up uh, at one point and that because it was so overwhelming. Can you ladies address that? Well, I mean, what I mean by that is <clears throat> when I discovered that these incredible women existed, I was saddened because there was a universal understanding when I when I was coming up that math was for math and science was for boys, so I already um, had a low expectation of myself when it came to math and science. And when I think back um, throughout my whole education, I sat in the back of the class um, in math and science because it wasn't for me. And so I get this script script and I read it, and through all the obstacles, they still did these amazing. It was still uh, able to change the course of history. And how come I don't know that? How come we didn't know that? And I became really angry because I felt like a dream had been stolen from me. Mm -hmm. um, and so then I remember saying to Ted, I have to do this movie. This movie is so important. I have to do this movie because I, n n not one girl should, be, should feel like the, how I felt. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> Um, I, what was the question again? Well, Sorry. The, the movie and, 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 and why this was such, the kind of movie you wanted to do. Oh, well, I, I, it's sad, but I, I, when I first heard about it, I thought it was historical fiction. 
and that uh, says that we weren't heralding the inner workings. We weren't uh, speaking to the minds that got our men to space. And um, I, I, just knowing the contributions that all of these women made, as well as the white computers who weren't even honored, uh, I wanted to be a part of their telling, the, the telling of their story. You know? Yes, this is a part of uh, American history and an important American history. These are American heroes. Uh, and for me, I, when I read the script and you know, heard about their contributions and learned more about the women um, and what NASA did during that era, when they put aside the isms, the sexism, the racism, uh, the classism, when they realized that at the end of the day we all bleed the same color, that's when we achieve the extraordinary. And I just pray that it serves as a reminder of what we can do when we put those things aside and, and um, become one living, breathing organism moving forward. Pharrell, how do you decide when you're thinking about the music for a movie like this? How does it come together? Uh, well, this one was a bit different for me because um, I started working on music at, toward the end of 2014 uh, that was 1960s-esque. And then um, somewhere in 15, uh, we got the call about the project and it was like, okay, the universe was sort of tuning my mind to be able to write songs that were gonna be bespoke for the film, such as Running and I See a Victory. And uh, while in the process, it's like you think about why songs made it back in those days, and it's because there were so many you know, walls of adversity and so many barriers um, for race and for gender and just advancement period um, that when people made music, they called it soul music because the music li literally came from their souls and it had to, it had to be able to tear through and, and cut through all those barriers uh, to make it on uh, the other side to, any, to, the, to the ears of any race. It just, a, a good song was a good song. So I found myself trying to challenge myself in the way that um, those writers and, and producers and singers did back then. Bill, lastly to you, so uh, was, was there a lot of a give and take or were there times where you're, you're talking to Ted and you're going, no, you can't do it that way, Ted. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> well, Ted and I and, and a number of other folks at NASA helped a lot uh, with uh, providing all sorts of information for things. We talked quite a bit about the, the script. Uh, we went back and forth on a couple of different versions of it. Uh, there was a lot of great material from uh, Margot Shetterly's book that the movie is based on uh, that, uh, that really helped a lot. And, and uh, uh, to me, the, the great part of being a historian and actually getting to work on something like this is that the people dedicated to the movie, particularly Ted and the, and the cast and the production team, were so into telling the story and getting it right. And they wanted as much detail and as much accuracy as possible. And I, I was delighted to help them in that direction. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Yes, you. you made now us we're going to take uh, questions here at uh, Kennedy Space Center. Wait for the mic to get to you, and uh, and then uh, name and affiliation, please. I'm an investigative reporter with the CBS station in Orlando. Thank you all so much for coming here today. My question is, for each of your characters, Octavius, Taraji, and Janelle, what were some of the biggest challenges that your character had as a black woman in NASA during this time that you, playing this character, like really almost took you back, like I cannot believe they had to, do, like uh, I guess surprise you, um, but they had, but they still managed to, you know, go ch go forward and challenge forward. What, what would you say each of them, for each of them? Well, I just think, I can't speak for the two ladies, but in my, you know, I just think that, um, I actually had to, to, a chance to meet Katherine Johnson. She's still alive, she's 98 years old. And I kept asking her those questions because, you know, I'm a, I'm a new millennium woman and we have rights and, you know, we can speak our minds. And so I kept asking her, like, what, what, what was it like? You know, you had all the obstacles stacked against you. And she just said it was what it was. You know, that's how, that's how things were. I just went to work every day. And I thought, wow. What a strong approach, because you can always sit and complain about how bad things are, but then what is that accomplishing, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I was like, wow, um, 
that's pretty amazing. That's that's pretty selfless because mm -hmm. obviously what you're doing, even though you're not thinking I'm going to change the world by my actions, but you are. Mm -hmm. And the fact that these ladies did not complain, they just got up every day and fought the good fight, now we have a space program. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's the most inspiring thing is knowing that they they uh, were able to persevere through those obstacles during a time uh, where laws really prohibited them uh, from achieving their dreams. And my character in particular, Mary Jackson, uh, she believed that everyone deserved a right to the American dream. She believed in equal footing, equal opportunity, not just for herself, but for the rest of the women who worked at NASA. And so when she was fighting, it wasn't just for herself, it was for everyone else who was told that they were not good enough because of their gender or their uh, 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 their race and I just hope that whenever any young girl or anybody sees this film that they can look to them for hope and inspiration and and know that they'll come out on top and at the end of the day and for me I, I think when you think of the climate in our country uh, in the 60s these women didn't have the right to vote at the time that they made these contributions to science technology engineering and math uh, but they didn't look externally for that validation. Uh, they knew that their contributions uh, would be a part of something greater than themselves. So when you think about the fact that racism was the law of the land, segregation kept us separated from our white counterparts, and um, it didn't change their minds that they were able, what they were able to contribute. But it's definitely, uh, it was pervasive, and, and it's something that you have to keep in mind when you do a period film. Like Taraji said, you know, as modern day women, we have agency that they did not have. And uh, it's what we do with that uh, now that's important. And being a part of this film with two wonderful actresses that I admire, and then having Kevin Costner, Jim Parsons, uh, Kirsten Dunst, Mahershala Ali, Aldous Hodge, that amazing cast, and then all the wonderful talent behind the scenes. People weren't signing on to get million dollar paychecks. They signed on because they believe in the story, and it deeply affected all of us, and hopefully it will have a lasting impact to the next generation of young girls of color in STEM. Uh, down here in front, and then Ken will come to you. Hi, this is a question. Uh, Robin Simango with the Observer Media. I'm um, a question for Taraji, Octavia, and Janelle. Uh, did you see any comparisons uh, in your own roles as African American women in Hollywood vying for roles that may not be available? See any comparisons in yourselves and the characters that you play? Yeah. Yeah, the struggle is there. The struggle is real. Um, but again, what I learned from Catherine is you don't complain. I can sit here and say, oh, they didn't pay me enough for this role, or I didn't get this role or that role, or, but what, again, what am I gonna do? How, what is that helping, you know? So even in an industry, I, I really can't sit here and say Hollywood hasn't been good to me. I've been working. Have, mm -hmm. have they written enough zeros on my check? That's the question. <laughs> 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 but that's not the question you ask me because I don't write the checks, yeah. you know. But, um, yeah, I, Hollywood has been good to me. I don't complain. I just do the work. And, you know, I look up one day, I'm nominated for an Oscar. I look up one day, I have a Golden Globe. I look up one day, and, you know, so you just do the work, and all that other stuff comes. I'm pretty sure Catherine or none of these women thought they were going to NASA to change the world. They were just excited to have a job in the field that they studied in school. That was just a blessing for them. So just to go to work every day. But, see, they were prepared. And when opportunity meets preparation, you can change the course of history. Mm. So if you stay focused on your purpose, then you don't worry about all the accolades because that, that will come. People will notice work. When you do good work, it goes, you cannot unnotice it. You, you cannot not notice it. Yeah. Just like this story, we couldn't keep this story quiet forever. Mm -hmm. It was bound to be told <laughs> because the, story, the, the work that they did, these women did, was just that amazing. I think that these women uh, did not really think about race or gender until someone else made it a big issue. 
And then after it uh, started to get in the way of them pursuing their dreams and their goals, uh, that's when they, they had to uh, stand up for themselves. And again, I think these women are selfless, uh, were selfless because uh, they were not just doing it for uh, 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 them to be happy, but for everyone, their communities to be proud, uh, and for the women working with them to also have those same opportunities. And I think in my real life, I've tried to do that. I've tried to uh, make sure that I'm, I'm speaking out whenever an injustice is done. I, I believe that an injustice done to my sister is, is an injustice done to me. And I think that these women took that approach, and whenever they had the opportunities like Dorothy's character to bring everyone along with them, they made that decision. They stood firmly in that, and uh, you know, did not, you know, uh, think selfishly about it. They they were servants of of, of staying on uh, and fighting for what's right. And I think we all do that in our personal lives as well. And I would just add, I think both of these ladies said, spoke eloquently about uh, the issues at hand. Um, but gender, par gender parity in the workplace is still an issue. Um, we are fortunate to be in entertainment. And, uh, you know, uh, we're afforded a, 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 certain, a, a certain comfort. But when you go out into different industries, you know, women should be paid as their male counterparts. They're doing the same job. And one thing I would really like to uh, credit NASA for mm -hmm. is being uh, progressive yes. in their approach because they didn't have to open the doors to minorities in the 60s, but they did. They didn't have to allow women in positions of, of power uh, throughout the years, but they have, and they've been very inclusive, and I think they should be, uh, other industries should look to that um, sort of thinking because we all have something to contribute. And if, if anything, I am so, I, I always loved John Glenn. I always, I mean, he's, you know, it was before our time that, that all of this, uh, you know, happened, but the thing that struck me most is that he made a decision to put his life in the hands of an African-American woman. Mm -hmm. That was not a popular decision at the time. And if you can do that, you know, put aside your differences and believe in a person based on what they can contribute and how they contribute it, I mean, man, the, mankind, we, we, we will go beyond the stars again. Yeah. Uh, go ahead, Ken. Hi, Ken Kramer, Universe Today, Northeast Astronomy Forum. For um, each of the actress, actresses and Pharrell, I wonder if you could talk a little bit more about the research you yourselves did into, in, into the, each of these women. What, what did you learn? How did that help you portray the, the women that you portrayed? And, and how did, what research did you do to try and come up with some topical music? Thank you. You want to start us off, Pharrell? Yeah. OK. <laughs> um, I think from the very beginning, from the onset, for me, uh, being from Hampton Roads, Virginia, I was born 11 years after 1962. I was born in 73. And um, I, so I grew up with that music and my atmosphere. That was a part of my environs. Like it was, that was my life. Um, and then there was the, when we, when we, you know, I reached out to Hans Zimmer to work on the score, um, which he pulled me right back into it. And we also work with Ben Walfish. And I think what we did is our first objective was to make sure that we had a score that did not sound like you, you would expect it to. So when you think about films, the, their heroic moments or their sad moments or, you know, their devastating moments, there's usually a set of chords or chord progressions that will be very Anglo and Euro leaning. And we thought, well, look, this is the 1960s. This is the 1960s matrix um, where the gravity and the physics was much heavier on African-Americans mm. uh, and twice as hard on African-American women. So we needed to give that cons those considerations um, real breathing room in our work. And so we found ourselves trying to make music that we felt like would resonate with women and would definitely reflect that 
gallant time that those African American women yeah. lived through and endured. You know, they, as, uh, you know, as uh, Ted wrote, you know, they saw beyond the numbers. They actually saw beyond the era. Yeah. And that math went on to help uh, John Glenn in his orbit, you know, um, five times, uh, no, three times in five hours, uh, and so on and so forth. And so we needed to give that consideration that, that I know this is taking very long, <laughs> but that we were trying to, to, to connect to what it must have been like for people who saw beyond their conditions mm -hmm. and were, were never wavered, yeah. you know, because there was something in them that was just a little different than, than you and I. Yeah. Um, and that was, that was mainly, our, that was mainly our, our, our focus, you know, that and just staying away from what you expect. And, and giving you something that paralleled what you were going to see on screen. Okay, cool. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> they did a phenomenal job. Um, in terms of character research, sadly, there was not a lot of information around my character. Uh, and I know Dorothy, because both of our, 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 our brilliant women, uh, unfortunately, have you know, passed on, and we didn't get the opportunity to speak with them and not a lot of their family, but we did have the opportunity to speak with Margo Lee Shetterly's father, who worked here at NASA with the ladies, and I learned so many, so many incredible things about Miss Mary Jackson. Uh, we didn't get the opportunity, and that's like a whole nother story film, but after she became the first African-American female engineer, and she was just wanting to be an engineer because she knew she had the mind. She had such a broad world view and, you know, she saw beyond her circumstances and, and just wanted to work and, and, and do what made her happy. But after she uh, achieved that, that victorious um, uh, win, she hacked into the NASA computers and she discovered that women and minorities were being paid significantly less than, you know, the white male counterparts. She presented this information uh, to NASA along with a few other of her colleagues, and she, she helped uh, advance the careers of, of more women and minorities uh, at NASA and, and, and challenged NASA too. <laughs> and they, of course, were progressive. They listened uh, to, to, to treat them fairly. So that right there, just such an honor to be portraying this woman. We have about five minutes left. I want to grab a quick call on uh, the phone bridge, Robert Perlman from Collect Space, and then I'll come back for a couple of final questions here before we wrap it up. Robert? Hi. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, great. Um, for Ted Melfi and, uh, and anyone on the panel who would like to answer, um, in her book, uh, Margot Lee Shetterly talks about how she was mindful that while she was writing about the untold history of these hidden figures, that she also had to be careful about not creating new myths in the process. So how conscious were you while creating the film about what you were depicting on screen, whether it be historically accurate or fictionalized for the purpose of telling the larger story, uh, that what you showed for many in the public, including many children, would co become accepted as what exactly happened? Well, you know, I, I, tell, I say this all the time, but the movie's not a documentary. I mean, you know, there's a great documentary NASA has done with the Discovery Channel called uh, When We Left Earth, which is an exact depiction of the Mercury program at that time. Uh, for the most part, we were painfully aware and very careful with how we portrayed the three women and the things that they accomplished. Uh, there are direct quotes in the movie. John Glenn's direct quote is, get the girl to run the numbers. If she says they're good, they're good to go. Um, she then goes and does those numbers. Th those calculations for John Glenn took three days. We can't do that in the movie. So she's, <laughs> even though she's a math genius, she's not, <laughs> she's not that, math, that math of a genius. So uh, yes, it took her 25 seconds in the film. Uh, those calculations took three days. Mary Jackson um, petitioned to court in Virginia and became the, you know, and, and, and got approval to go to an all-white school and got that degree and became NASA's first African-American aeronautical engineer. Um, Dorothy Vaughn became the NASA's first supervisor. These things are all facts. The space race is obviously 
pretty much verbatim, you know, factually and, and, and chronologically. Uh, there are little liberties taken here and there to dramatize, so, you know, but the crux of the story is true. Try to get a last couple I quick questions. Oh, go ahead. I have a question. So, is this like live, like C SPAN, NASA channel style right now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> To boldly go <laughs> where no man has gone before. We're, we're going to boldly go in about two minutes, so. <laughs> I just had to just like me. <laughs> Live. <laughs> Sorry. Christy Zizzo, I'm a digital media producer for uh, News 13 in Orlando, Florida. Uh, you spoke about how upset you were that you didn't think that girls could do math. Um, there was a recent video on the Hidden Figures website where you talked about the fact that math, that you don't have parades for mathematicians, uh, Mr. Melfi said. This is something that we could use more of in Hollywood when we're talking about inspiring not just girls but boys to pursue STEM careers. Is, do you see this as a way of maybe getting more game players in Hollywood to make these kinds of movies? That's what I hope, that's my hope. Because this movie is so new, it's so fresh. We've never heard this story before. It's not the, you know, 5,000 ways to play JFK. You know, I love JFK. We know his story, we know the man before he became president. You know what I mean? This is just a new, fresh story and I just hope it, it leaves Hollywood with a hunger and a thirst to discover more unheard of stories because you know, if this story exists, it's one of a million. Mm -hmm. You know, so I just hope this movie hits because that's what Hollywood pays attention. Oh, it's making money? Right. Let's find some more stories we don't know about, you know? So that's what I honestly hope that that's what happens. Yes, let's make more films about smart black people. <laughs> uh, I know that sounds crazy. I know, I know that sounds crazy. Jack, Jack Warner of Warner Brothers, one of the original founders of Warner Brothers, said movies have to educate, enlighten, and entertain. Mm -hmm. And lately, we've just been entertaining. But you have to educate and you have to enlighten people. You have to I'm raise the human. What? I, I will talk later. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I choose movies. If they oh. educate, enlighten, and entertain. Yeah. I didn't know somebody else. You heard that, that in yeah, my Yeah, and quote. so that's what we're. Yeah. <laughs> my last that's, interview. That's asked. what Hidden Figures is about. And, and uh, spread the word because money talks and your ticket sales matter. And that's when people go see a movie and that's when they make more of them. December 25th, right? Select yeah, yeah. theaters, January 6th, worldwide. Yeah. Final quick question, and then we're going to wrap it and boldly go. <laughs> Where no man is going. Exactly. Quick question for Pharrell. Um, uh, Michael Phillips with weatherboy.com. Who do you find inspirational today as it relates to science and technology fields? Myself? Yourself. Um, Dava, who runs uh, JPL, she's on another level. She's, a, she's also a female. Oh, I'm so sorry. All right. Okay. Dava? who runs JPL, um, she's amazing. Also, Elon Musk, mm -hmm. um, I feel like he is a, a, a savior for this, for this mission in a lot of ways. We don't know what's gonna happen in the next four years with the space program, but there are private organizations like his that are definitely gonna go, and no one can necessarily stop that, you know, as we lose our EPA and all these other things. I'm very excited about these individuals that recognize the importance of space, just like these three African-American female protagonists in the 1960s. You know, they recognized that that math was gonna be integral um, to make advancement in space. And, mm -hmm. and we all know any advancement in space is advancement for our species. Mm -hmm. So we need more people like that. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I think, I think Elon is kind of like, yeah. I mean, because think about it. He has SpaceX, he has Tesla, and he has Solar City. Yes, I want to be a part of your organization and, you know, would like to talk to you about some stocks, too. Uh, yes. <laughs> so we can all boldly go <laughs> where no man has gone before. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so very much for attending this uh, one-of-a-kind press event here at the Kennedy Space Center. Thank you to uh, Ted Melfi, Octavia Spencer, Taraji Henson, Janelle Monet, Pharrell Williams. Live on Barrett. cable, live on cable, right now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all. Wait, wait, wait. You didn't say. Yeah, he did. He I did. did. Oh, I, I was just talking. You, you were, were talking. talking. Sorry. <laughs> live on cable right now, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> we're live. Oh, <laughs> that's going to go viral. Oh, yeah. It's okay. <laughs>